Hello and welcome to our next talk. Our speaker is Kevin. He's a security consultant and he will tell us how to prevent our own phones from spying on, on, on us. Therefore, a very warm welcome to Kevin and enjoy the talk. Thank you very much for introducing. Yeah, well, uh, it seems to be quite a topic. I'm um, surprised that so many come here to this uh, little room. I'm happy to see you all. Uh, smartphone security, um, how came we into touch with it? Of course, with the news all the last uh, years, uh, it's really a big issue. Uh, what we are doing, um, my name is Kevin, as already mentioned, we are making tests uh, most of the time in the OT environment and in industrial areas. We check security according to different um, uh, rules and standards. And uh, we also make some consulting work for the uh, safety of, yeah, against uh, industrial um, espionage. And uh, this talk now is about technology. We will see products, uh, but this is not a, a sales talk. So we will discuss the technology that is under the product. So we have to keep this in mind. And we just want to share a little bit uh, of the experience we made uh, from, yeah, you will see. Um, smartphone security, counter surveillance for mobile phones. Mm. What do we expect the next uh, 25 minutes? After what we have a little bit question and answer. Mm, first, how smartphones are hacked. Not too much in the technical detail how, but what is possible. And then common techniques uh, to uh, prevent this. Um, we have a lot of spy software for smartphones available around. We just have to Google it and we have a lot of functions uh, possible for everyone today uh, to buy and to have these apps. Of course, if we um, have to deal with government agencies or really uh, industrial companies who have much more power behind them than just to download an app from the app store, we have yeah, much more difficulties as we will see. But the basic function of all smartphone spyware uh, software is this what we can see here, the audio surveillance and uh, is possible to listen to audio calls. Um, that can be a phone call, but also a uh, call via app, WhatsApp, whatever. It's also possible to activate the microphone into the room if the uh, mobile phone is hacked. So you can, if the uh, phone is on the desk in the home office or in a conference room, you can listen what is going on in this room. Additionally, standard um, technology is position tracking. You can have access to all the pictures stored on the smartphone. You can read all the text messages, uh, even if it's from uh, some um, yeah, instant messengers. You have access to the social media um, um, yeah, activity, what happened. And what is also critical in sophisticated programs, you can also place um, files on the um, victim's smartphone, a smartphone in order to yeah, change um, proof, for example. So this is, everything of this is possible, but today we just concentrate on this one function, the live audio surveillance and the audio recording, because we discussed today what practical possibilities exist to prevent smartphones being used as bugs. Um, one, one uh, function we see in this uh, spyware is also the, the fake switch off mode because uh, 10 years now, 20 years ago, we could say, okay, we take out the battery of the smartphone and it's safe. Today, it's not possible to take out the battery. And even if we switched off uh, the smartphone, but is, it is compromised, then we think it is switched off, but it is in fact not. So this is not really a solution. What have we seen in the last couple of months uh, going on with hacked smartphones? Yeah, many things uh, were in the news. For example, uh, Emmanuel Macron, uh, his smartphone was um, um, spied on with a well-known uh, software that we will read many times now. Uh, in Spain, this is from last week, uh, it's a big trouble going on because many um, pe uh, people from the parliament, from the, from the uh, government uh, were spied off, the smartphones were hacked. Big goals are also many journalists. 
and this is also from last year. And this is an interesting, um, how to say, goal uh, for uh, companies or for countries to spy on journalists to get the information where they have their sources from, with whom do they um, communicate and what information do they really have. So this is something we regularly see. And a big uh, part, person of interest, uh, so to speak, are human rights activists. And uh, on, on many uh, smartphones from uh, people working for human rights, we see spyware. One thing we have to know, it is impossible to completely secure a smartphone or a smart device from the software side. A smartphone is well, about the smart we can discuss, but it's a computer and uh, every computer you can have somehow you can get root access and if you have root access you have access to the microphone and uh, even now in the new uh, software versions you see for example if the microphone is uh, accessed to you have a, a, a small uh, yellow uh, spot in the corner of the display but i would not trust too much to it because if you have access to the computer you can also manipulate this and um, by the way by accessing the microphone uh, it's not important what kind of software to you use to communicate. If you have a completely end-to-end -end encrypted uh, voice call via signal or something, uh, it's okay. No one can wiretap it on the line. But if you have access to the microphone of the device, uh, you have it in uh, clear text, so to speak. So we know it's impossible to make a secure smartphone. It was not possible 20 years ago, not 10 years ago. We are not optimistic enough to say in five years it will be possible. And this uh, headline here was uh, interesting. Also Apple realized it and what they do is they hardware from the hardware side switch off or disconnect uh, the microphone because they don't trust that even in their programming someone else could not uh, could maybe access uh, the microphone. So systems will always be hacked somehow and uh, it could be, or it was already, a very interesting talk about, for example, this Pegasus uh, hardware uh, came to the um, uh, iPhone, how the different generations of this um, software, not hardware, this software uh, used the exploits to um, come to the iPhone. It's very, very interesting to read it, but it, yeah, 20 minutes are definitely not enough uh, to speak about this. Mm. Some weeks ago, we had from the uh, German radio station, TV station, Bayerische Rundfunk uh, test. Um, they were programming an Android app. So it was not by a secret service. It was uh, just uh, computer geeks programming an Android app to access the microphone and it worked. So just like this. Uh, so this is nice to have this kind of uh, TV shows to um, strengthen a little bit the awareness for the people what is possible with the little, vi uh, li little device we have in our uh, pocket. To summarize, who is affected? Potentially everyone. It could be from uh, stalking the, the ex-spouse who is uh, spying on someone and is downloading an app and uh, tracking and listening to the room. It's uh, economic espionage. is a big, big, big number of uh, dollars or euros uh, that uh, are lost there, of course, or, um, of Wirtschafts uh, Wirtschaftsspionage. Journalists are spied on human rights activists and politicians, of course. Platform is completely independent. Android, iOS, uh, other things. Uh, since smartphones exist, it was possible to do, and it will also be uh, the thing in the future. Um, how can a phone be used as an audio bug? So we said we don't concentrate on reading messages or reading the emails because this is always possible. But how is it possible to access, uh, access the audio from a phone and buy this, the audio of the room? So online it's possible to have the live transmitting of audio and video. Uh, so the attacker is making a connection to the smartphone and is live listening what is going on in the room. This is for cheap apps possible or um, yeah, easily uh, compromised uh, smartphones. Other things are also possible. 
a recording of audio and video without that you know it, or acoustic triggered recording of audio, or time-based uh, recording of audio. If I know at 10 o'clock is the conference, so I make a timer that it's recording the audio. And uh, this attacks have the, for, for the attacker, the advantage that there's no online connection necessary. So basically, the smartphone can be in flight mode or it can be completely shielded. It could, could be completely cut off of the network and it will uh, still work. What's also possible, listening to keywords and transmitting the audio or um, trigger with keywords a speech-to-text engine. And we have uh, many things that are not proven, but uh, ma many things that are going in this direction that this is also actively used. Because if you have a phone that is listening to the room, which is quite normal right now with the uh, artificial intelligence of realizing if a glass is breaking or the fire alarm is going on or whatever. So it's listening to the room. It is triggered by keywords and is making the text into a text file encrypted and is sending away the text uh, uh, three hours later via the Wi-Fi. This little packet of text is going away. It's practically impossible to, to, de to detect. So to, to find this on the fly is practically impossible. And all of these attacks are possible while the smartphone is offline. So even if I have it yeah, shielded completely. So we see um, big enemy, so to speak. What are possibilities to fight against this? So basically, there are three attempts to make it. Software. Uh, solutions, then a hardware solution based on shielding the electromagnetic field and a hardware uh, uh, solution based on uh, shielding the audio. So these are the main areas where many companies go uh, to make their, their products around it. Um, so for the software, uh, we have to say, I have to switch now a little bit of the ship better. Okay. Hey, cool, it's taken. See. Um, because for some things I'm, I was a little bit afraid to download the pictures, so I just make kind of live googling. So if we look for anti-spy app, we find a lot. And these apps basically mean not necessarily something, because they can, of course, some of them can really detect uh, things that happened, but if the smartphone is already compromised, the smartphone can also switch off this kind of apps. And the other thing is um, sophisticated spyware, like for example uh, Pegasus, they detect this kind of uh, tracers and they can on one side um, eliminate them and el eliminate themselves so they don't leave any tr almost any trace uh, on the uh, smartphone after detected. Oh, that was the wrong thing. I wanted to make here. So, um, for us, it's kind of an open source tool to detect if uh, Pegasus is installed is here from the uh, MBT, the, the lower link. Um, by this, it's possible to detect if there was a, um, yeah, if the smartphone was compromised already. To make it short, the software solutions, the apps we can download, for prevention, it's not really good. For detection, it works somehow. What we also have is the hardware uh, solution and there if we find uh, things in the internet like for example these tracking sleeves, they make advertising with it, uh, anti-electromagnetic field and you put the uh, smartphone in kind of a yeah, sock or whatever it is and they uh, say okay it's shielded from the network so it has no connection to Wi-Fi, to Bluetooth, to uh, mobile phone network. And by this it is secure, you cannot listen to the room. Mm. 
they are actually as good as they look. If you try it, they are pretty cheap, about 9 euro uh, you can uh, buy them. I don't want to make advertising for some of the uh, sellers here, but they are very funny companies uh, existing. But basically you can ring your own smartphone when it's inside the sleeve. So for, for that it has for sure a GSM connection or 4G um, uh, connection or whatever. So it's not completely shielding. And the other challenge with this is even if they would shield completely, um, they would not uh, filter the audio. So you could still make kind of offline attacks with it. Mm. What other uh, possibilities do we have? So this we saw already. Yeah, does not uh, shield audio and Bluetooth and um, GSM does work. Then we have some interesting hardware. Um, shielding cases, they look like this. And here we go a little bit deeper. So this is uh, live in the internet. And for example, if we take this, it should be the same like this. Uh, we see, do we have a better picture here? Yeah, this is actually the same uh, kind of thing. I just use this one. Uh, here we see a big case. Inside the case is another case of stainless steel uh, with very good electromagnetic field shielding qualities. And these shielding uh, cases are really tested also in an EMC a laboratory. And they work surprisingly good. So if you have a phone inside this device, nothing is coming out and nothing, nothing is coming in from the radio frequency. So no Bluetooth connection, no GSM connection, uh, nothing. Uh, these suitcases are usually used if you have a conference in a big company, uh, DAX 30 or DAX 40, we say in, in Germany now. And so everyone has to give his phone into the man and the desk and they are put into this case. And you can be sure no one is transmitting audio from inside the room uh, outside. Uh, they work. However, where are we? The challenge with this is mm, no audio um, shielding. So if this case is in the same room with the people who are talking, it's still possible that audio is going to the phone and the phone can record the audio from the room to transmit it later. So this is not a practical solution uh, in many cases. Of course, it's uh, heavy. You don't want to have it when you're going. And the last thing is uh, many people have a problem to give away their phone. So if you sometimes we don't have a cho chance if you go to another embassy or whatever, we, we give away uh, the phone. But if you're in a conference and you have to give away your phone, especially in the security uh, environment, this is not the best uh, thing um, uh, many people are happy with. But however, this is very common a so solution that many uh, companies do. And the next thing I wanted to uh, show you is a audio solution here. It's called uh, Pelta. And this I have live here. And I wanted to use this chance to introduce you what these uh, people made. It's kind of an audio jamming box. No, perhaps to know. And uh, this is designed to put the smartphones inside and for two smartphones to put inside and there exists the audio jamming inside the box. The thing is, the audio uh, jamming is not, put it here, uh, you cannot hear. Other solutions are also um, on the market where you hear the audio in the room, but even this uh, supersonic di digital audio uh, audio jamming noises have a, a physiologic um, yeah, uh, affecting, uh, are affecting our body in a way. So this is a little bit difficult. And the people who made this product, uh, they made kind of a um, digital audio signal that is killing uh, the AD wandler, the uh, analog digital um, wandler. Oh, my brain is going off. 
um, from the smartphones. And even these uh, highly sophisticated uh, microphone arrays of modern smartphones with seven um, mic uh, MEMS microphones, it's possible to kill, so to speak. So in, in practical things, the smartphone is inside the box. It's not shielded against the um, radio frequency, so you can still hear it if it's ringing, but the smartphone itself does not hear any noise from outside. And if you like, later we can try it outside, and this is why I have it here, because if you find uh, things that do not work, <laughs> it would be funny to find it out, because we tried it with many um, uh, networks and with many uh, microphones, and it was really so that the audio was completely shut down. Depending on the network provider, if it's a telecom, for example, or someone else, we had even the effect that the noise was interpreted from the uh, provider as a noise, so it was cut off completely, so the other one heard nothing, and on the other provider, the other one heard just a digital noise. So it's an uh, interesting solution for that. Mm. We would be interested uh, if this kind of uh, hardware or solution as um, a kind of technology uh, would work to strengthen the security of uh, vulnerable people in this regard. Because it would be a technology that is affordable for people, that is possible to keep on the home office, to keep uh, in a conference without giving away uh, the mobile phone, and that uh, gives uh, not only a, a psychological security, but a real security, because it's literally not possible to um, yeah, listen into the room, uh, no matter if it's an offline or online attack. It's not possible to prevent smartphones from being hacked. It was not in the past, it's not possible right now, and it will not be in the future. But we hope that by searching and making research into this direction, uh, we find some uh, possibilities to um, yeah, make this a little bit more safe for the future. This was the information about the technologies. What do you think, what are your questions in this regard? Uh, first, a big round of applause, and then we have a small Q&A, and the first question is already here, so I will give you the microphone. Do you need power uh, to use the device, or is it uh, still uh, just passive? So, um, so for this device, um, this, uh, specifically this, is need, needs power. It has a TC Hohlstecker. So there's no intelligence inside, nothing that can be hacked. So no USB or something, but it needs power. It needs uh, 18 volts, something like this, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Any more questions? So do you think this problem could be also solved with a hardware switch built in in the phone that switches off the microphone in hardware? This is what some do, not only for phones. So Apple made it with the iPad and uh, other um, manufacturer of, for example, uh, smart displays for the wall. They made a special anti-spy version of the display. And it's nothing with the software. It's just that no microphone is inside because even they cannot trust uh, that if a microphone uh, is built inside the device, no one can access it. So yeah, it is a solution if you can really switch it off. Uh, with smartphones, it's another challenge because you don't have only one, smart, uh, one microphone inside. You have many, you have an array, array and you can make uh, a lot of, uh, Apple is very sophisticated in the uh, noise cancelling in this regard. So they have really the little uh, face shift digital analysis inside. It's crazy what they are doing. So just to switch it off in a smartphone is a challenge, but if it's possible, it's, it will work, yeah. By the way, for the technology, it's very interesting uh, if you want to go deeper in how AD-Wandler could be uh, bricked or how uh, smartphones 
microphones work and how they are, what they are able to do. Um, most of the microphones used in smartphones are MEMS uh, microphones. This, if you Google it, you find the technology. But interestingly, not a lot of manufacturers of these MEMS microphones exist on this world. So you can count them on uh, two hands. So that means that all smartphone manufacturers use more or less the same microphones. And if you download the data sheet of the MEMS microphone, you see surprising uh, technical specifications. For example, it's possible to listen to blah, blah, blah in a radius of seven meters. And so, so they're really highly sophisticated hardware. Yeah. It was more than the answer to the question, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, any more question? Yes, in the back there. Okay, um, it was said that uh, if the s a smartphone is in flight mode, it collects even more data with, re with regard to the motion and uh, other things, or even audio triggers. Um, mm -hmm. Do you recommend to switch off uh, or switch to flight mode when you put it into this device, or or not? Or can you confirm that this is true that in flight mode there are more there's more data collected? Um, so the, uh, this was meant in the connection if a smartphone is compromised and is on flight mode, it's still possible to record the audio in the room. And uh, for that, of course, the biggest problem is that it is uh, compromised, the smartphone. Um, you can have different approaches in preventing the room of getting wiretaps. So for example, if you're at home, it makes no sense. If you're working in a home office for the uh, Deutsche Bundestag, for example, it makes no sense to put it in flight mode because you have to be reachable. But you could put it in the box and if someone rings you, you still hear it because you hear audio from the box, but the smartphone cannot hear what is going around. If you're in a conference and you have uh, your, the device on your desk, so this specific device, uh, then it, it makes also sense to have it not in flight mode because you can see if someone is calling but no one can listen. However, depending on the security level, it's usual today that not only for conferences the smartphones are collected and shielded, but also the complete room is scanned and monitored. And for that, it makes again sense to have it in flight mode because we have to know, or the people have to know uh, what phone or what uh, radio peak is legitimate and what not. So it depends on the security, on the risk uh, management behind, but both can be reasonable. Mm. Thank you. Any more questions? Oh, yes, again. Mm. Um, it, is there something that makes uh, phones more easy to compromise uh, than laptops, for example? <laughs> it depends how much money have your enemies. Um, basically, computer is a computer. It's a very good question, but I don't want to answer it from a technical. I want to ask, uh, answer it from a philosophical way, because uh, we know, for example, for phones exists um, Pegasus, and we know the danger, and we know the kind of spyware, and we know that uh, Google and um, Apple, they are always trying to prevent the zero days and to be very good in the uh, latest updates. But however, there are always zero days. There's always a possibility to uh, jailbreak it, basically the same that a spyware is doing. But this is what we know. Actually, I would not be so much afraid of what we know. I would be more afraid of what we do not know. And this affects also the computers. So, yes and no. <laughs> okay, anyone? Okay, it doesn't look like it. Then another big round of applause for Kevin.